Next stage, as promised, the microphone socket. I've got the chassis stood in a plastic box at the minute for stability, stop it falling over. I don't want to shock the valves unnecessarily because they're quite delicate. And it holds the thing in a suitable position to work on. Get the screws out of this. They're rather stiff. Slack them both off and uh, see if letting the angles relax a bit. Helps loosen them up. Oh, that's better. That one's got a tag strip under it as well. All the screws have uh, uh, paint or varnish of some sort on as locking compound for vibration proofing. I think that's what's binding and making them a bit uh, stiff, even though these have been out before. I don't know if you can see that, they've got uh, red paint on the end where the thread was through the nut. Temporary extra connection on it. Yes, it was a, an extra wire. Uh, I tried linking the DIN plug screen to the audio, see if it made any different. The audio ground, see if it made any difference. Uh, and then cut the link because it didn't improve things. That's replacement socket. It's not quite the same as the originals. I mean, it's the same standard uh, for the connector, but the original. That in frame. No, it's not. Oops. The original. You can see there. Is an older style that has a Paxlin uh, base where the terminals come through it. Same with the uh, little two pin remote control on off socket. So, uh, these are the oldest style I could get. Uh, which look the same from the front but um, they don't have the pack sling. Uh, from one of the photos I found online the correct way around is with the two inline flat pins towards the front of the machine. So it's backwards that's that way. Set back together. These are quite stiff where they're going over the paint on the screw thread.
that's the socket secure. And it's back through the tab that holds the terminal strip down. Now the actual connections. As I've mentioned before, I'm a bit unhappy with the wiring system on this. Uh, mains input has pin 1 live and pin 3 ground and the circuit shows a macron wired between pin 1 and 3 on the 4 pin connector so if you plugged the Micron cable into the power cable, uh, things would uh, get a bit unpleasant. So I'm going to use pin 3 for audio ground, which is ground on the power connector, and pin 4 for audio in and out, uh, as that's not used in the mains cable. Uh, so if someone does, for whatever reason, connect the two together, it's not going to cause anything catastrophic to happen. Right, uh, so pin 3 is that one, pin 4 is that one, the two front one, that's quite convenient. And I believe that is the chassis ground. It goes direct to one of the valve pins on there. And only from after the valve pin it goes to a terminal tag somewhere up here that's um, the back of that screw. I hope that's in frame. Yeah. Um, it goes back of that screw for the actual chassis ground. So they're they're avoiding any uh, pickup or ground loops. Uh, it's almost a semi-differential circuit, although it is grounded. The first thing it connects to is the valve pin. So the signal between the two wires is applied directly to the valve when it's uh, in uh, record. Okay, so these need to cross over. Yeah. Not quite long enough. It's obviously on the other side of the connector or somewhere else. That one will do. But the uh, Signal, signal wire needs extending. Interestingly, none of the general interconnect wiring in this is done with uh, conventional insulated wire. It's all tinned wire with uh, loose sleeving fitted. The only bits of uh, pre insulated wire are such as the bulb holders and the power select the voltage select jumper on a bit of screen wire that runs between some of the controls. So there's some you can see that down there it's uh, braid screened with no insulation over the braid. It's between the switch, the record playback switch and the volume control. Right, so that needs to go through there. I need some manipulating that. All the small items shift around in my tool drawer every time I uh, slam it shut. That's the ground pin three. I 
I don't have any of that small black sleeving. I do have some. Oh, a bit big. It's, a, it's a larger PTFE sleeve. It's, it's much bigger. Got some brown. Oh. No. And I don't know what to use for that, so uh, I'm not going to, I'm just going to leave it with a bit of bare wire in midair. I'll save some one component, I'll leave it off cuts, uh, making jumpers and things. Rather than messing about threading it through, it's going to be difficult to remove, I'm just going to put it straight on. Connector pins are already well tinned, so reflowing it does make it quite a nice joint. So I can now just cut that back, trying not to burn my knuckles on the connector. And match it to that original wire a bit higher up. Oh, lower down to it, will it? I'll redo that when I get some sleeving and put a new piece of tin wire on it. Since I realise this is a crystal mic, oh, I'm guessing it should be a crystal mic from the impedance, and also a high impedance headset. Um, whilst I've been waiting for the capacitors to repolarise, I've been doing some uh, search on eBay uh, and I've found a near contemporary crystal mic that's uh casing looks slightly shabby uh but uh, the uh, actual mic capsule inside it appears to be pretty good so i bought that on ebay and i'm waiting for it to turn up um headphones uh i've not found anything ideal yet because i say the, the headphones run through a one meg volume pot, they come from the, directly from the wipe of the pot, which means they need to be very high in paints to get any real uh, audio efficiency and audio level. So in the meantime, put the box um, for testing, I bought a couple of little, um, transformers which are 1k plus 1k at one side to 20k at the other side. That's a 20 to 1 ratio, so uh, that should give a rather better impedance match using normal headphones than uh, connecting them direct. You know, I think my headphones are about 30 ohms and I'll use. Uh, I've got two of them. I was going to try cascading and we'll see if that works uh, to improve it or it just makes it worse again. That would give a 400 to 1 ratio. So uh, um, that, uh, again, theoretically, if they're not too lossy, would give a better match still. Whilst I was looking for some bits from another project, I also found I have got a vintage earpiece headset. Uh, but I think it's a 600 ohm one. to try and bring myself on the microphone stand. Again, it's uh, near contemporary, but it's actually a telephone test uh, gear headset. It's a GPO, General Post Office, uh, which was the uh, nationalised organisation for telecoms before British Telecom. Again, I would say it's 1950s, 1960s. So it looks the part. It's quite similar to some of the things that were used back then. It's even got the, the 1950s dust on it still, or accumulation since. But um, I'm guessing it uses the typical little balanced armature capsule that uh, was used in telephone earpieces at the time. 
So uh, it's probably going to be too low. Though it would work with those transformers. One or both of those. It was 600 ohm. That would make it about 12k through a 20 to 1 transformer. Which is not good, but uh, it's a lot nearer than anything else I've got. So I'll give that a go as well. Right, so that's hopefully everything that needs doing to that section and uh, the chassis. Um, and uh, that's ready to go back in. I'll give it a bit of a dust down in places, it's a bit uh, shabby. But uh, a gentle clean on there. It looks like it'll just dust off. Um, that's done. So I need to check that. Uh, this poor solenoid system that I mentioned in the previous video and then I can start looking at uh, reassembling it and testing it through fully. So until then